Mark Lamont Hill, who is uh, a professor, but even more significantly, I think, an activist. He combines the two, and uh, he and Mumia Abul Jamal have produced this uh, extraordinary book of conversations, uh, which I have been reading, and I've heard Mark talk about this book several times. And it is, um, interestingly, I think, a book of lessons mm -hmm. of life. And um, two men from different generations, one a professor, one on death row, not on death row anymore, but at the same time we would say a professor in his own right, For sure. who is a professor to the world's oppressed people. Mm -hmm. And um, so Mark is um, a friend of mine. He's, a, I think, an extraordinary person. And I like to say, just from a personal standpoint, I think I've seen Mark evolve and grow. And I think he says, when he talks about the book, that one of the things that transformed his life, or the biggest thing that transformed his life, was his encounters with Mumia. So without further ado, I'd like to bring uh, the author of this extraordinary book, the activist, North Philadelphia native, go. the <laughs> South Philly people don't hate, <laughs> a North Philadelphia boy, a real scholar activist in the Du Bois tradition. Uh, oh, <laughs> I grew up as an activist, you know, I grew up understanding what his case, but never fully understanding who he was as a person. So when I had the opportunity to, uh, to hook up with him, uh, when I, when he, he actually reached out to me first. Uh, we got to talk, we got to build, not on the book, not on anything in particular, just really showing mutual respect and love for each other's work. Uh, and he offered some gratitude for some of the work I had been doing in, in his behalf, and I offered endless gratitude to him for, for all the work and, and sacrifices made to our struggle and to our community. So that's what the book was, you know, that's what the, the relationship was about long before there was a book. Uh, and then over that time we grew into a friendship, man. and that friendship uh, was special to me. And I know Mumia is somebody who, because of his political situation and his personality, is guarded. And so to be able to break into that, to be able to have a friendship, to be able to understand him on a different level, to be able to connect with him as a brother was, was, was incredible, was special, was something I didn't expect. And then to break into another level and actually produce intellectual work with him, uh, just took it to another level. It, 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 not just because of what it meant for us, but what we think it might mean for the world. We think that this relationship uh, and the product that came out of this relationship might be uh, an offering that can help some brothers and sisters and really human beings all around the world uh, are on some key areas in our life. So it, it's an honor to be a, a friend of his, it's an honor to be a comrade of his, it's an honor to struggle for justice with him, it's struggle to struggle for justice for him, uh, and, and it's an honor to produce good work with him. This is not it. This wasn't an easy book to write. Uh, Mumia, when I asked, when someone interviewed Mumia and asked him about this project, he said this was the easiest book and the most difficult book. He said it was easy in the sense that it was based on conversations that we had, and to that extent, it wasn't like sitting over a computer and writing, you know, a 500-page manuscript. But he said it was tougher in the sense that he had to really think through issues in a different way. To have an interlocutor, to have somebody to engage, that to have a conversation with, made it a more of a challenge. His ideas were getting pushed. My my ideas were getting pushed. We were getting pressed and challenged in a different way. We were forced to examine ourselves in a way that we really don't do in our own work. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's hard when you're writing. You get caught up in your project and your ideas to 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 start to reflect on yourself and your shortcomings and your failings, and and you don't see your blind spots. When you have somebody there with you pushing back both ways, it, it forces you to see blind spots that you don't normally see. And so this book in many ways was, was special for me in that same way. This was Mumia's seventh book, it was my second. But uh, it, I, I, in all the work I've done, this is by far, far the most rewarding and, and the most challenging. Um, I can't help, as we talk about this book, and I do want to talk about the book, but I can't help but, not, but think about the work that's going on in the world right now, a lot of the activism that's going on in the world right now around uh, Trayvon Martin. And for me, 
it's it's difficult to talk about this book without thinking about it in light of something. That's part of the the the, the benefit of a book like this is that we can talk about it in light of something. And at this moment in history, I think talking about it in light of Trayvon Martin is so important to me. Uh, it, you, it's impossible not to know the case. It's not. It's impossible. Even Fox News is talking about it now, right? I mean, everybody is talking about this 17-year-old boy who was essentially executed on the streets. You know, I was I was listening to MSNBC earlier today, and even Michael Nutter said it was an assassination. I mean, I'm like, if you got Michael Nutter on the same page, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With left-wing activists and right-wing, I mean, everybody's on the same page with this saying that this was an execution. And this black boy was executed unarmed. Uh, by someone who by, all, by any measure to me was a sociopath uh, who was allowed to go unchecked for a long time. Uh, and so for the last month or six weeks I've been working on this. Uh, in the last two weeks it's, it's picked up steam partly because of black media, partly because of social media, Twitter, Facebook and such. Suddenly the whole world is talking about this case as more evidence comes out. Some evidence hasn't even been fully revealed to the public yet but when you see all the evidence you, it's, it's, it becomes even more overwhelming that this boy was simply executed. I'm so glad to be here though, for real, man. This has been this has been great just to talk to talk about the book, you know, because I really don't get to talk about the book that much. As uh and the book is doing well, you know, but a lot of folk don't wanna don't want us talking about the book. <laughs> a lot of folk don't have us come out and talk about the book. You know what I mean? They'll order it and everything, but it's hard to have spaces to talk about this because Mumia still is a volatile subject and some folk are scared of it. My own university. Won't let me talk. Won't have a book talk. Mm -hmm. Steve Harvey's been there, <laughs> so it ain't even a question of whether it's a referee public. Steve Harvey been there to talk about his book, you know, which is not me. So I give thanks, man. Uh, you know, Black and Nobel's always been been great. I grew up not that far from here, just th about three, four blocks, really. Well, a little further, but right off Luzerne Street. So um, this this place has always mattered to me. Black bookstores have always mattered to me. It's a common theme we see here, um, and it speaks to so many themes that come up in this book, um, and maybe that might be how I think about it. Black life is as complicated uh, as it ever has been, that there are key issues, no matter where we think we are in the moment as a people, uh, no matter how many successes we achieve, no matter how much prosperity we gain, there's still work that needs to be done. And we try to lay out key areas in black life where what needs to be done, whether it's the criminal justice system, whether it's an educational system, whether it's the way we talk about race, whether it's the way we think about masculinity, or whether whether we think about what we do with ourselves, you know, our own bodies, our own minds, how we deal with love and relationships, how we deal with our own healing processes, how we understand black masculinity. We really want to get to the core of all of that. I think at the end of this, people will understand our politics, they'll understand our worldview, but they'll also get a critical analysis of where we are as a people at this moment. And then one other thing they'll get is they'll get a more personal analysis of both of us than we've ever offered in our work before. You know, this movie is seventh book, and there's hints of who he is in the first one. There's a few hints of him in, in the third one, but this is the first time when he tells his story personally in a different way, and this is the first time that both of us open up uh, about some key issues in our lives, man. So we're real proud of it. We think it's a, it's a whole other side of who we are, intellectually and personally. Mm -hmm. Black 
Can't go back.